Last time on Secrets of Monster Island, Monster Island, our monster hunters had arrived back in Rivermouth uh, to find that, of course, they needed a ship to go to the other island. Uh, so Mr. Henrik pointed them in the way of a criminal organization that uh, had been hosting a group of pirates. And so you headed off to that criminal organization's, one of their headquarters, and had talked to uh, Amity, their leader, um, and had made a deal to, uh, apparently, the pirates were helping out an escaping member of the Stormlord um, get off of the island before you all caught up to them. Uh, Amity promised that, uh, realized that the Stormlord is no longer a profitable cause, so she uh, asked you all to deal with it, and she will give you all the rights to the pirate crew. Um, and you warned her that Sir Henrik knew where she was, and she skedaddled. Um, on the way, you fought some manacores, which you have harvested their tail spikes from, and uh, got to the ship where you found a helmed horror and a spellcaster. The spellcaster was dealt, both of those were dealt with very quickly. Uh, you managed to salvage the armor and the helmet, and with just a little bit of repairs, turn into very amazing items. Uh, you managed to, of course, kill the spellcaster, uh, and had managed to get the ship, in which, in which you learned that Captain Asmo, the uh, captain of the ship, is now at your command. So, as we pick back up, you all find yourselves on the ship, as Captain Osmo says, All right, well, uh, tell me about yourselves, uh, you all. Do you have a group name? Well, we're just the Monster Hunters. For right now. Really? Really? You don't have anything more creative? Huh. I wasn't aware that we needed that. Well, Yodel A and his fancy three. I think maybe we're, we're monster hunters. There's two problem with that, Yodelay. There's four. Maybe that was. The, hey guys, yeah, you, you forgot about me. You forgot about me, Yodelay. You forgot. No, I was counting you. Oh, you weren't counting Alax Alaxador. I'm sorry, Alaxador. It's okay. I'm usually the one forgotten. Um. So, uh, what about you, Captain Asmo? Uh, what? what what do you what do you do here? Well, I'm a pirate. I. You, he said he's the captain. Yes. I'm the, I'm the captain of the ship. Uh, I lead everything. Uh, my crew is uh, below deck at the moment, uh, or gathering supplies because we weren't supposed to leave till. Well, later. Um, when, when are you supposed to leave? Uh, this uh. Later, way later this afternoon, but we could definitely put it off longer, uh, especially since we now have to sweep these bodies off the deck. Oh well, Yodele, throw these bodies off the deck. There we go. All done. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, you got a big, strong man here. Uh, I really appreciate Yodele's. Uh, Yodele, I'm assuming's help. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, this is Yodele, uh, we have Yuri, uh, I'm Arlen, and we have Alaxador, and of course Arlub, uh, our little grung friend here. They are my fancy three. <laughs> and a half. Three and a half. Um, three, and... three and a half monster hunters. <laughs> yes. Are you now um... counting the, the little cat, Janet, from accounting? Do we still have the cat? Well, yes, you cat. do. The, the cat, so so you see Janet look at you all. Janet looks at you all from the little pouch that Yuri has been carrying her in and just kind of meows at you all uh, with her eyes wide open. Oh. Yes, you still you still do have the cat. Uh, was there something else, guys, that we needed to do before we left? We should well, we need probably... to let you pirate know that your boat is now under our charge. Your betters have given us the use of this ship for getting rid of that guy, the one that's sinking right there. Well, he, you saw me throw him in. Yeah. Well, throw him in. 
as long as there is gold to be had and adventure to be had, that is all the price you need for me. And delicious yes. barbecue. Oh, barbecue? Really? I was not promised that with my last it's venture. Really good. Yes. Well, to make sure you've got plenty of golden food. Yes, Laxador. Don't we have um, some equipment to pick up? The the, the gold um, ferret uh, monster thing. We, we were getting that. <laughs> right. Right. Um, uh, yeah, I I would say uh, that uh, teardrop would have told you you guys can actually go pick that up uh, as soon as possible because. Um, it is your payment for going to the island. However, they don't mind giving it to you early, understanding that you would probably would have gone to the island anyways. So, if you guys want to head back there and uh, collect that armor, you can. Can we sail around to them faster, or do is it over land faster? Um, I think. Uh, cause go to it. Let's have a race. We'll take the boat. You take the land, <laughs> and we'll see who gets there first. Mm -hmm. I'm just willing to take you up on that. I think I think overland on horseback would probably be faster than sailing the uh, ship. <laughs> um. So it's just up to you guys what you want to do. I think we just go back. Just let's go walk. Um, make sure that they like. How long is it going to take for us to get back to to teardrop? Uh, at gotta... a fast at a fast pace, you should be there. If you left right now, you'd be back by. Um. You'd be back by. Uh, I say you'd get there at sundown, and you might just want to rest there for the night, and then come back and, um, in the morning. I, I think being the most prepared to head off to an island that we don't know what is there is probably yes. a wise course of action. Yes, and I'll say Yodelay if you want to fix up your helmet, uh, over the night too, and the armor, then I could say you would do that too. Yeah, definitely. I won't put all this stuff on. It looks very cool. Yes. So, is that what you all plan to do? Yes. So, Arlen, tell the captain that we'll leave tomorrow night. Leave with, yes. uh, as the tide pulls out. Yes, I think that's a great idea. So, before you all leave Rivermouth and head back to the eastern side of the island, uh, you are pulled uh, away by, uh, Uh, Obsidian Kindleheart, uh, who you recognize as the uh, associate to the mayor, or uh, the partner. Um, and she looks at you all and says, um, Be sure that you do arrive in the morning. We have a very important meeting at Sir Henrik's abode, if you can make it. Yes, that shouldn't be a problem. We uh, just have to go pick up some stuff on the other side of the island and we should be back in the morning okay uh, uh it, it's like noon now aiden yeah um, it's it's yeah so uh, look arlen um we won't be back till like midday tomorrow well depends on no you'll 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 be you'll you'll basically basically it's kind of like late afternoon sort of not noonish okay. uh okay. so you'll be there by sundown um and then you'll be back by morning it's not this once again this island only takes you like a full day to get it's not a big island very okay. small um so yeah so you guys head off to the east uh, uh as we are writing i would like to um we never did find out about that shadow that uh, escaped from that water thing we killed. Is that the same shadow that gave you that bow, Yuri? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I, I've been using it for a couple of days now, and it hasn't had any kind of ill effects or, or anything like that. So I was expecting some kind of cursed bow, but it was, uh, it was doing pretty well. The thing that escaped from the monster that made him evil gave you that bow? That seems kind of counterproductive. I mean, I'm a pretty cool guy, so... I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that, Yuri. Yeah. I'm just saying it's, it's like, if you were a big bad monster, you wouldn't be going and going like, Oh, you're the one trying to kill me. Here, have this powerful bow. That doesn't make much sense. 
but the monsters really make sense anymore. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I didn't think it made sense when they gave me this massive scar, but she has uh, plans. She always does. And Arlen, you would remember that whenever you died, the Mother of the Night said not to trust the shadow. You remember that? Yes. Uh, whenever you had passed on for a moment. Uh, so you all journey back to the eastern side of the island. Uh, Arlen, Arlen, go ahead. Do you let that, you let that be known? I yes, I do. Oh, I, 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 net, I let everybody know when I woke up, okay. basically. Because uh, I, I think I... You, you, Yuri had been given the bow after I died. Right. Well, I and mean, Alexador so, does. I don't think Alexador knows that you died at this point. Oh, because I jo he joined after that. That's true. Mm -hmm. So we, I think, we, well, yeah. This is, you were very riding. excited about paying off your debt. Yeah, <laughs> and I actually did pay off my debt. Uh, yep. So, so yeah, I died, but I got better. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> he walked it off. I walked it off. Just, just a flesh wound. Um, but basically, uh, spoke to the the mother of night, and, and you met her too. Yes, and she was uh, beautiful, uh, just as beautiful as I always imagined. But she also told me that when I die again, that I've made my choice, and I can't go with dusk again and so uh, I'm hoping there's a way to change that in the next 600 years but I, I think that should be our first foremost thing our life yes so well we have plenty of time yeah, I don't think it's urgent uh, about to say you have like let's say Alaxor you have yeah, like more time more time than us yes but <laughs> Alaxor Alaxor what your sense of urgency is compared to Arlen's sense of urgency is a little bit different considering your lifespan so and his lifespan are a yeah. little bit different yeah, um, a thousand plus years for Arlen versus like a hundred for Alaxador yeah, exactly. a little bit different timetables that let's lifespan say, didn't help him the first time that's true that's it Let's say Alaxador, Arlub, and Yodele have a very short lifespan, while Yuri has a decent lifespan, and Arlen has a long lifespan. Um, so yeah. I've already outlived Arlen once. <laughs> <laughs> it's He's very laughing. true. Uh, so you guys are going to the eastern side of the island. Teardrop uh, gives you the finished uh, studded leather armor. Uh, which has, of course, uh, immune, uh, plus one and is immune to fire damage. Or not immune, resistant. Immune? Resistant to fire damage. Oh, I misspoke. Oh. <laughs> the DM said it, it. It's real. It happened. Put it on the sheet. Put it on the sheet. It's canon now. <laughs> it was immune for a second, and then you dropped it on the floor, and it's now it's just resistant. Ah, uh, you got it dirty. It's not as good anymore. <laughs> um... And That's so you rest, you, Arlen. And, yeah. <laughs> and so you rest there for tonight. And as you fall asleep this night, you each have dreams once again. Yuri, your dream, once again, out in the desert, you appear to be. Um, no river in sight uh, that you saw in your previous vision. But what you do see appears to be a house, a nice humble abode, uh, a little small, um, but with a fenced out area to the right of it. Um, and as you're looking at it, you see the steps leading up to the doors of the home are swung wide open. The doors are, are open to this house? Yes, it appears to be like, uh, just, uh, just, yeah, just completely swung open. And so can I move in my dream? Yes, you can. Okay, so am I able to go inside the house? Yes, you can. As you begin walking up the stairs, you look inside the, uh, you look inside the house and there lying on the ground, covered in blood you see a body and that's where your vision ends oh that's 
That's not quite a dream, that's a nightmare. <laughs> yes, you do have a nightmare on this night. So. It depends on your, you know, point of view. You weren't the dead body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arlen, you dream, once again, of your brethren, brethren that you saw on that stone behind... And sister in. Uh, locked behind the cage. And as you look at him, he says, Please help me. I, I've been trapped here for 50 years. Where are you? I'm, I'm, and then it cuts off. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> bleep. My name. There's, there's a, <laughs> there's a bleep. For the week. There's your beat for the week. And Ugh. as for you, Yodale, you have wonderful dreams. Uh, of rosy fields frolicking about <laughs> <laughs> you 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 and your shadow hold hands play patty cake uh it's like a whole rosy. ring around the rosy hopscotch my normal dreams you you, you lose Those a my normal dream you lose a game of tic-tac-toe to your shadow um and it's all that just a great you time give me the back row <laughs> and finally, Alexador. I don't like the way you said that. Well, you are in possession of the black tablet, aren't you? Black obsidian mm -hmm. tablet. All yeah, right. I pretty much. I I, I read over because I still don't understand the runes on it, mm -hmm. and so I kind of glance through them and kind of rub my hands through the runes, you know, trying to make out what it is. Yes. Yeah, so as you're doing that. You sense this presence next to you. And as you do, this uh, weird shadowy mist appears next to you and says, Who are you? I'm just a small, humble servant of the woman of the night. <laughs> oh, sweet darling child of the mother of the night. You are ignorant. I've heard that before. Why don't you join me? And together we can help this world for the better. I'm afraid you you may have me at a disadvantage, sir, and I didn't introduce myself. My name is Alaxador Blue Singer. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? I am Aklis, the demon. And uh, what good do you think you can offer this world? <laughs> good? You really wants me to offer good? You, you said for the betterment of this world. Well, you can say that. But the betterment of this world is not the same for people. I believe this world should be destroyed. And anarchy should rule absolute. That's an interesting viewpoint, and I could understand that our differences might be a hindrance. But you have the right to your opinion as long as you, you know, don't enforce it on other people. So what you're saying is you do not wish to join me? Oh, I'm, I've already joined somebody. I told you, I, the, the Night Mother, that's who I belong to. I wouldn't be here without her. Yes, the Night Mother. You want to know something interesting about the Night Mother that you probably don't know? <laughs> Information is always a uh, welcome gift. I'll give you this piece of information for free. She is not originally from these islands. Or at least not a, not a deity from these islands. 
how she snuck in to the islands, I have no clue. But her name is a new one compared to the others. So do things not change? I suppose so sun, things do the, change. The sun comes uh, up, the sun goes down, the moon rises and the moon falls. That's change and it's just a single day. Lots of changes. Yeah, true. So too I, is the things of deities. I have not been free for over 8,000 years. That's a long time to be stuck in one position. Yes, and traveling with you and the tablet has been a new awakening for me. Oh, I've seen many of things that weren't there before. That is wonderful. So you get to experience what we experienced by me having these tablets. Yes. So what happens my... when we get them all? <laughs> if you wish to know that, you would have to join me. Uh, can I make an insight on that laugh? Oh, yeah. And your dreams are coming in my dream well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm an inside check. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say at disadvantage because you failed your wisdom saving throw like the other night, I believe. Yeah, I did. The first time. Yeah. Me and my um, may I, may I uh, use, use uh, guidance still? I'm going to say no okay. because this Not is an problem. exact situation yeah. thing. No, that's perfectly understandable and reasonable. Oh, that's a six. You have no idea what that laugh means. <laughs> You're very insightful. Well, I think I'm still kind of, I mean, it's a dream as I'm messing with the tablet. So, um. One, one thing. So, you will not join me. Am I correct? I don't know. Hmm. Things change. True. Information changes things. As I said, the sun rises and sets, and it changes a lot throughout the day. I can't tell you exactly what I'll do tomorrow. I suppose, but I guess we have plenty of time together, don't we? Yeah, you said you said 8,000, 800,000 years, something like that, 8 millennia? Yes, 8,000 8, years. years. Well, at least it's a pleasure that you finally spoke. I appreciate that. We now know that you're here. And that's something I did not know before. Well, one last thing. I have learned from watching you all that no matter what, Rivermouth must fall. Not the first one that's made those claims. And yeah. <clears throat> the more that I have seen of Rivermouth, I'm starting to wonder myself. Things <clears throat> don't always appear as what you would think. Even in the church, there's always things happening behind the scenes. Very rarely am I ever seen, and now I'm being seen. I handle things behind the scene most of the times for them. But, as I said, things aren't always what they appear. But, I think this is where we part. You have a wonderful night. And I think I take the tablet, even if it's a dream, and put it away. Put it, and just kind of roll over and ignore that he's even there at this point. And as you take the tablet and put it away, you hear the laugh echo in your brain for a moment and then disappear as you all get along rested. Wonderful. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of deception because I'm going to try to convince him that it doesn't affect me at all. Okay. And I just kind of want to from a role playing, it's a team, so it's probably not as effective. Like, I think there's probably a visible shudder okay. as he kind of uh, rolls over. As you wake up this morning in Lackstorm, maybe another wisdom saving throw. Alrighty. Wisdom saving throw, the thing I'm supposed to be good at. <laughs> Let's say you're still probably you're still probably this uh, the first best person. To, okay, so you uh, 
wake up this morning and this necrotic energy sort of feels among you and you just kind of brush it off as you continue on your day. You said necrotic um, energy? Yeah, kind of like... Does, does it feel yeah. different than my normal necrotic energy? Very. Uh, unlike your normal necrotic energy that feels you, mm -hmm. this one felt cold and uh, very chilling, unnatural. Uh, as for Yodale, as you... Oh. It's me! Did anybody else see? I can't see anything. Yes, so as you all awake, Yodale appears to be wearing the helmet of the Helm Tor, and uh, uh, can't appear to quite see you, but seems to kind of see you, if you want to describe that. I think he looks way. Um, yeah. An improvement to his facial structure. If you kind of hang it away, my ears aren't blind. <laughs> Yori, 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 if we step here, can you see us now? As we're like maneuvering around, and I can see you there. And then I step I can't back. See you over there. That's weird. That's very strange. But what yeah. if we take the helmet off? Does it? Is it the helmet that's blocking the sight? No, no, I just slept with the helmet. I didn't even put it on yet. Oh. Wait, you oh. don't have the helmet on? I guess I would if I was to see where you are. Yeah, if you were to have the blind sight, you would have seen it. You should be able to see. So let's say that you put on the helmet at the moment you're like, Whoa! I can kind of see now. How many yeah. mice are is Janice holding up right now? Yeah. I, know, I can see your smell, though. That's weird. Yes. I can, I can see what's... Somebody cuts wind. You can able to do that. Anybody within 60 feet, I can see it when it happens. Yeah, you're, you're the one that cuts the wind the most. Yes. No, and it's a beautiful plumage behind me. <laughs> it is crazy. Like a peacock. And you see Arlu sort of like doing the hand motion in front of you. He's like, can you, can you see this? <laughs> He's like, stop biting it. Stop biting it. <laughs> As yes, so you were told that there would be a meeting in Rivermouth this morning. Anything else you would yeah. like to do with the water genasi before you leave? Uh, I believe I have a proper excuse to be late for the meeting. Um, before we leave the water genasi, I would like to write down the name and talk with the leader and just kind of hand a note to her, and it just basically says, um. Uh, does the name Eccles the demon mean anything to you? Um, and yeah. I, kinda, I do it without looking as I'm writing because I've probably been kind of a scribe in the church. So used to writing without looking at what's there because I'm afraid that whatever's with me is looking through my senses and close it and hand it to her. Do you wait for her to respond or do you leave? Um... I think I hand it, and then we have the meeting to get to. Okay. Um, but then I think I would also write a, a kind of note similar for Arlen of, hey, I have something inside the tablet that I'm carrying. I think it's seeing through my sight. It gave me a name and give oh. the name and then just kind of hand it to him. Um, um, but it, is it making you feel like you shouldn't be trusting yourself? Um, uh, no, I don't, I don't feel that, but it wants me to join him. And, and do you I want to join him? him? No, okay. I don't. No. Like, is he I trying think... to teach you Cobra Kai karate? <laughs> Can I uh, inside check the, the no... I don't want to join him. Yes. Okay. Uh, Eleven. Uh, Laxdor isn't very good at hiding things, okay. um, and so he is being very truthful with you, okay. and just. Um, but he does. He does say, "I think 
information is always paramount in everything. And the lady teaches that everybody has the right to their opinions and the right to exist. But you also have the rights to protect yourself if that entity or thing comes after you. Yes. And, you know, I think this creature might pose a different perspective that could help us along the way. But I worry about it. So, uh, as you all have this conversation, heading back to Rivermouth. And you can let thinking interfere with your thoughts too much. Oh, I don't have thoughts. They just happen. <laughs> yeah. um, so you head back to Rivermouth. And let me anything... ask, can I, can I drop by, um, oh, who's our wizard guy? Loco? Loco. Can I stop by his place? Yes, you can. Uh, Lerco, I was wondering, uh, would you happen to have any kind of thing like a bag of holding, a, a handy haversack, or anything like that? Uh, why, uh, yes, uh, my good sir. Um, bag of holdings are one of my specialties for the richer nobles. Oh, um, I would be willing to buy the bag of holding from you. Okay, well, it is a quite expensive expense, about a thousand gold. Okay, that's a lot more expensive than I thought it would be. Ooh, do you have designer it's... ones? Well, they come uh, in whatever design you wish. Uh, I can make an I can make a design. Yes, I will take a bag of holding, okay. and then I want to run to the store and grab some stuff, but I don't want to worry about doing that during game time, so I will send you a list of the things that I'm going to get. It's going to cost about 150 gold pieces. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to right now. Did you let us? Did you let us know that you were doing that, Arlen? Yeah. Uh, then I would have. You can have some of my money as well for getting some supplies. I've got 17. So. Okay. 17 uh, gold. 1700. <laughs> Just 17 gold. Just 17 Something else. Gold. I give it all to the church. If we could all, if we could all pitch in on that, and that gets me. Uh, I mean, we're going to have everything we could possibly need. Mm -hmm. so that for this trip because we're going to be away from we might be away from civilization so i'm thinking climbers kits uh healers kits uh block and potions, tackle some potions. manacles 10 foot pole portable ram all these kinds of things that we're going to be away from civilization and we're not going to have access to amazon so mm -hmm. do, do we have do we know that we're Earlier, we, we learned how long we're going to be on the boat for when we're going to the island. So, uh, do we know how long that trip is going to be? Uh, you can't quite say. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know if that was player knowledge or if that was uh, character knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So, if everyone could just put in 250 for that. Yeah, and may... I, I give you a list of things that I, that I want as well, so... We'll, uh, and we'll play with that. We'll put it will, on Discord. I will say that uh, Lurko would recommend if you're heading out for a very long time, then he would recommend getting maybe some diamonds to help revivify you <laughs> if you were to fall. Uh, so you and may want to add that to your shopping list times. too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Lurko even explains that uh, as he's making your uh, bag of holding, which any sort of special design you want on it. Uh, yeah, well, I want uh, the the uh, the image of the night mother in in a dark color with stars on it. Okay, so uh, you see him kind of take this bag of holding and kind of transmutate it into that design. Um, so you have a bag of holding now. Excellent. I would like to I'll, after I give him two hundred and fifty so that he can uh, Kickstarter his bag of holding. I would like to purchase my own bag of holding. Oh, okay, well, there you go. What design would you like, uh, Yodale? Um, a displacer beast given the thumbs up. <laughs> he says, how creative, and you see him once again take it, and you just see this displacer beast with a thumbs up, and you actually see it as a little bit of flavor hang in there above it. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um... And as you do that, anything else before you head to the meeting? Yeah. Oh, 
that's plenty. I mean, as, as Lurko will actually say, I'm heading that direction too. I was invited to the meeting as well. Oh, boy. Uh, apparently it's a very big deal of uh, whatever's going on. Um, so, you all head off to the meeting. And as you do, uh, sitting around the great big table, tons of chairs pulled up. Appears to be, once again, Sir Henrik. Um, tons of food is spread across the table for you all to partake in and eat. Um, there are seats, of course, for you five. And as well, you see Obsidian Kindleheart, uh, the mayor's associate. Um, you see uh, Ignition Kindleheart, uh, the leader of the Church of the Magma Lord. Um, you also see Captain Giselle, Captain the Guard, and finally Lurko. Um, all appear to be sitting around the table, and some appear to be eating, and as you all take a seat, Sir Henrik begins speaking. Ladies, gentlemen, uh, we have some news. Uh, so, on the news of Cameron Portia, he was once again given the ability to come back to life. No. Oh. And he has made his choice. He has decided that he will remain in the afterlife. Okay, yeah. All of his... All of his uh, wealth will go to his daughter, uh, uh, Ruth once she comes of age. Um, so that's, there's that news. As for um, Dalvir Fidelio, I have went around asking what we should do with him and knowing his past about killing uh, killing uh, uh, and you remember that uh, Dalvir apparently killed uh, Cole's uh, daughter. Uh, that Sir Enric suggests that he be put to death. Uh, if there's Can anyone that if there's anyone that opposes that, speak now or forever or hold your peace. Is that really making him pay for the crimes that he has done? And committed. Well, and, and how you do it? You see, Sir Henrik, look at you, Alaxdor, and once again, most of the faces in here don't really recognize you, Alaxdor. Uh, Sir Henrik and Lurko are probably the only two that truly recognize you. Uh, the others appear to be looking at this new face and wondering who is this, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, and as you say that, uh, Sir Henrik says, it's. In my personal opinion, it will not answer for his crimes. But it is too much of a liability to keep him alive. If that makes any sense to you, Alaxador. It does. I mean, things that are dangerous sometimes, when they intercede on other people's uh, abilities to live, must be dealt with in a swift manner. I, I, I get that and I understand, but it just seems a waste of a gift that the Night Mother has given us. Yes, many things are, Laxador. And as you say the Night Mother's name, you see specifically Ignition sort of give you the eye for a second, almost like he's trying to read you in a way. And as you uh, keep on with the meeting, uh, as for Lurko's son, Lurko has uh, come with a personal request if he, he wishes to express to you all. And Lurko stands up and says, I know my son has committed many crimes. Um, I understand that. Um, and I understand that he's probably not a good person, but I need to try to bring him back in, in any way. So I request, if you all would give it to me, 
the ability to test on him. Testing. What do you mean, test on him? Well, first off, he seems to have this innate magical ability that I have never seen before. Other than that, I want to bring my own son back. I mean, if you had your own blood taken from you whenever, well, he was just a baby, and per se, he was just now back, and he's the only family you have, wouldn't you try something? Yes, I, I, if you think you can handle it, I would say that that would be fine. Yes, and... Uh, yes. Hey. I have something that may help you if you'd like. An I think like I know all about magic. What did you say, Laxador? I, I have something that might help you, an insurance policy of sorts. And what time. is that? I can set up a failsafe for him. That if something goes wrong, he can be dealt with immediately. Hmm. I like that. Whatever it is, I trust your judgment, Alexor. I've only known you for a little while, but I trust you. It would, um, it would mean sending him to the Mother of Night. Forever. Mm. I understand, but, but it would I give also a chance and give an insurance policy, and maybe give a little bit of protection and understanding, as he kind of looks around to those that are here, to know that if something goes wrong, and we're not here to stop him again, mm -hmm. then it can be quickly dealt with. Yeah. I agree. All right. And well, to be honest, we could do the same with the other gentleman if you wanted to give him a chance. And Sir Hendrick looks at you all, uh, looks at you, Alexor, and says, So what would this you call insurance policy be? How would this work? The Night Mother has blessed me today with a new gift. I can store some of my magical power for future. That being said, we could decide on a trigger or a condition that if it gets met, it basically activates. And whatever I store on it would go off. <laughs> One of the things I could do is pulling the necrotic energy that is within myself and from the Night Mother to, to do that. Or you could even curse somebody so that they would not be as strong so that you all could handle her, them. But it would stay on them in, until triggered or removed. And if we you took see... the time to do it correctly, we could put multiple on so that if one was removed, by magical means, it triggers the other. Well, then we got a boat to catch. How long is that going to take? I think it's a good idea. I it think is. it's. I think that's. It gives some wise. assurance and some help, and potentially for them to make amends. And you could still get your son back. Gift. Yeah. Sir Henrik says. All right. Well. If you can do this, we might be able to let two men live today. If that's the case. I think it's a, a better use of the gift the Night Mother has blessed us with. Even the, the Magma Lord knows the gift, you know, of having more people to do things for them. You can put them to work around the church, around the town, bettering it. Mm hmm. Well, I start over your persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> Come on, dice roll. The twelve. Decent. You see, Sir Hendrick appears to be agreeing with you. 
perfectly. He does not wish for people to die. Um, it is his last sort of priority of any. Um, and you see Ignition uh, Kindle Heart sort of nod at you, uh, giving you uh, basically a yes. Um, and uh, and so Sarenric says, so I guess it's decided there's no one opposed to doing what Delaxador plans. Um, and a final thing before we adjourn this meeting, I would like to introduce our new monster hunter, Laxador Blue Singer. As he's already Alaxador, proven himself. Think as Laxador kind of is kind of a little taken aback and just kind of like, I, I appreciate the great honor. I just was following the path set before me. I oh, appreciate buddy. it, and hopefully, I can do it justice. Watch that honor talk. After you get killed a couple of times. <laughs> Looking over at Arlen going, yeah, we need to fix that. Yes. Well, I'll just try not to die again. I think that's the best plan. Or Hopefully we just kill things quicker so that you don't yet, have sir. that. All right. Well, uh, Monster Hunters, if you wish to talk to either uh, Lurko's son or Delvir before you leave, they, uh, you both have, you all have access to talk to them if you wish. The guards know who you are and will let you in. Smell you later, buddy. Do we want to ask him about the tablets? I think we are working through those. The less we talk with others about it, all right. I, th I think that I spoke. I left in a message with the. Uh, Water Genasi, but and as I said in the notes to you, I think we need to find more information, and I'm not sure who can be trusted. Mm -hmm. And since there is a, a radar of a potential mistrust with where we're at, maybe we should be careful with who we divulge what we have. All right then. If All that's right. the way we want to do it, I, I agree with you. Mum's the word. I, I I have no problem if we choose as a group to do it, but that is just my opinion. Right. All right. So, as you all leave the meeting, anything you'd like to... I know that you have the tablet. Yes. The orc guy. You're not mm -hmm. hiding anything from him. Yeah. So, right. so I will tell you the two people are... The people that know you have the tablet are Dalvir, and I think that might be it. I think Lurko's son, you could tell, could probably have a hunch that you have it, because Tama, or not, sorry, Tama, uh, Dalvir probably doesn't have it. So, you know, because they're both in custody, so. Uh, so anything you would like to do before you leave uh, with Captain Asmo? Except for going and getting my shopping, like I said, I'll send you what, yeah. does, what that is. Don't want to say any goodbyes to anyone before you leave. Might be a long trip. I would get with uh, the dad and set up all of your things so that it's... Basically, he knows the trigger and okay. can set it off. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of let him set it. And just so you're aware, Aiden, so what I'm doing is um, a glyph of warding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And inside the glyph of warding, I am putting um, feign death. Mm. Okay. So essentially, once the trigger happens, that creature will go incapacitated, uh, be blind, deaf, and look like they're dead. And I tell him this, so it allows for them to be dealt with. Yeah. And then you put the same thing on Delvier, I'm assuming? Mm-hmm. Okay, and you give uh, what uh, you give everyone that's in this room. I'm assuming the access to whatever the keyword is on that one. The right. the one for the son. I'm a little bit more picky Towards. on, and I'll let the father choose because I don't want someone accidentally yeah. setting so, that one off. 
So I will say um, that... So, and the, just, so the triggers on, on both of these is either A, it's getting dispelled. The spell is a trigger. So if it gets hit with the spell, it instantly triggers because mm -hmm. that's a sign of, hey, somebody else is trying to remove this that's not supposed to. And then whatever yeah. their trigger that they want it to be is. Mm -hmm. All All right. Right. What? <laughs> so yeah, but, uh, it, but it does take multiple hours to do this of uh, praying and doing to get this set up. So, yeah. So it'll probably take you the whole afternoon, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it takes both of my third level spots. And then since uh, Fain Death is a ritual, I then cast that as a ritual on it. So. All right. And I'll say that. So the Dalvir one is shared with everyone in this room, in the meeting room. Uh, the Lurko one, I'm going to say Lurko would share it with Sir Henrik, and that's it. Um, you know, it's his ideal to I divulge whatever the word is. Um, I, I, I think I know it so that you yeah. know it if something were to happen. Yes, uh, exactly. As well. So, but other than that, yeah. Um, I'll for him, so... So anyone else do anything before you head out as the last is going to take basically a whole afternoon kind of to do all this stuff. Yeah. Which gave me time to go get all my stuff that I needed to get from, this, from the general store. Okay. Yoda, you're yeah, I'm going to work out all the kinks of having my owl on my shoulder so that I can see through him and walk around without bumping into stuff all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Practice on that one. <laughs> I, I take the goggles of night and hand them to Arlen before the spell. Is there any way that you might be able to change this, get the, the wizard guy to change the looks of this? Into what? To maybe like glasses or instead of these big, huge, bulky goggles, these, <laughs> they may they be effective, but, they, but yeah, a little bit more stylish, a little bit more um, you want less really intrusive. Cool yeah, no, I don't want the other ones. people to know that I'm wearing them, if that makes sense. You just don't want anybody to think you're me. <laughs> that's, well, a, that's a little bit of it, but I don't want to tell you to lay that. Yeah, Lerko is. My uh, ears aren't blind. So Lerko uh, once again made these magic items, and um, he explains, uh, Alexa, you can actually come to him and tell him. So, what form do you want them in? Uh, I, I mean, just if they could be. Um, I don't know, just. Something that fits on my face but doesn't look like it looks just natural, like someone's monocles or glasses or, you know, not these big, huge binoculars. Oh, uh, okay. I'd, li I'd like um, it to be a little bit more hidden. I don't necessarily need glasses, but just something that, you know, can sit on the face and just be not intrusive to everyday wear. Vanity, oh. vanity, vanity. <laughs> Very okay. much so. I will say because these are magic guys that Lurko did create, and the fact that he is a very powerful mage, um, I'm gonna say he could turn it into let's go with a pair of glasses. Um, so you now have a pair of glasses that, if you look through, you can see that better in the dark. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be cool if those are like the John Lennon round glasses. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's. Yeah, something kind of stylish like that just kind of makes it a little bit less intrusive to be having on all the time. Yes. S someone make a laxador with that. Someone make a laxador art. Yeah, <laughs> laxador with the yes. A laxador with the yeah, exactly. I think all we right. can make that happen. Yes. Um, and so you all gather up on the ship. Uh. Uh, Arlub. And you all, Captain Asmo, the crew, and prepare to set up on an adventure across the seas and to other islands. As that is where we're going to end it.